Hi everyone, it's time for a new episode of Science Police. Really, there hasn't been any shortage of material or science crime, I just haven't really kept pace here on YouTube. This time I'm going to talk about Francis Hornacek and his assistant Junfeng Duan. Both of these are at the Miller School of Medicine in Miami, where Hornacek is chair of the Department of Orthopedics, and Duan is a research professor of orthopedics. Hornacek is both a scientist and a cancer surgeon, and he's previously held senior positions at UCLA and at Harvard. He's also president of the International Society of Limb Salvage, so this is someone in the elite of cancer researchers in the US. A few months ago, I identified several papers where images had been reused between papers and within figures. I wrote a blog about that, which you can read below, and then I sent a load of emails to journals. So now that some of these papers have actually been retracted, let's take a look at those in this episode of Science Police. And we're going to start with this paper. Cyclin-dependent kinase 7 is an emerging prognostic biomarker and therapeutic target in osteosarcoma. So this is a paper about trying to find ways to predict how someone's cancer will progress and perhaps generate ideas or strategies for the treatment of this specific type of cancer. The protein they're interested in, CDK7, is an enzyme involved in the cell cycle, so that seems like a sensible target for researchers interested in cancer. So what did I spot in this paper? Well, initially it was something quite simple. In figure 5, the authors show the treatment of two cancer cell lines with BS181, which is a small molecule inhibitor of CDK7. And what we can see here is that as they're increasing the concentration of BS181, uh, there's less and less cells. So the assumption here is that BS181 is able to inhibit the activity of CDK7 and slow cell growth. The problem here is that these two images at the start are nearly the same, they're just slightly different in brightness. We're supposed to be looking at two different cell lines, which were ultimately derived years ago from different patients and then grown in the lab. So these should be microscopic images of completely different experiments. I posted this as a comment on PubPeer and one of the authors replied. They agreed with my finding and they said they would check the data and correct the paper. So after this response from the authors, I went back to look again and I found another overlap in this same figure this time between the 5 and 10 micromolar conditions for the U2OS cell line. And this to me is really significant. If the authors already went back to the raw data, they have all the advantages. They have the original images with the file names, the metadata, like when the images were created. And presumably these are all saved in a folder structure, but they didn't find this additional problem. That really hurts the credibility of their supposed check of the original images in my mind. So after this kerfuffle with the images of cells, I noticed something else in this paper. In figure 5 here we have a western blot which is a method that can be used to identify and somewhat quantify the concentration of specific proteins in cells. The darker these bands, the more protein you have, basically. What the authors wanted to show in this figure is that as they treated the cells with a BS181 inhibitor, they were able to modify the signaling pathway of CDK7 without reducing the quantity of the protein in the cells. And that's a useful thing to know because it would tell you that the enzyme activity specifically is key. If the inhibitor just reduced the quantity of CDK7, it might be that the real target of BS181 is elsewhere. And I don't want to get lost in a not very good biology lesson here, but the consistency of these bands is important to the credibility of the author's main argument. Once again, they've done the experiment in two different cell lines, and what I've noticed here is that these two bands in the U2OS western blot look very similar to these two in the KHOS western blot. Splicing and mixing bands in western blots is a well-documented problem in the scientific literature, and I do want to warn people that you should be careful before making an accusation or asking a question like this because there are some reasons for legitimate splices and for reusing bands. So you really have to understand the experiment before challenging anyone. But in this case, I think there's definitely enough to ask the authors for the raw data, which would be the full scan of the blot. It would look something like this. And that could help to clear up concerns like the ones I've raised here. Anyway, instead of actually providing the raw data, Francis Hornacek himself responded saying this, There are no problems with the western blots in figure 5. 
The phase contrast photomicrograph will be checked by the first and last authors. And shortly after that comment, Sage Journals retracted the paper. Here's what their retraction note says. At the request of Sage Publishing and the managing editor, the following article has been retracted. Sage Publishing was contacted by the authors requesting a replacement in figure 5C. During an internal review of the remaining figures, further concerns were raised. And interestingly, Sage went on a big rant here about various Western plot issues, which I'm not going to dive into, but they did a critique figure 5, which contradicts Hornacek's assessment of there being, quote, no problems. Anyway, here's the important bit. The authors provided the images underlying these figures for assessment, but Sage Publishing is unable to validate the integrity of these images as they do not meet our criteria of raw, unedited images of the experiments conducted. This article has been retracted due to uncertainty around the integrity of the original image that call into question the validity of the findings. The authors did not respond for comment when notified of this retraction. And that is the key part for me. The authors were asked for the raw data of the Western blots and they could not provide it. And we're not talking about a study conducted in ancient history. This was published in 2021. And it's important to note that these bar charts and quantitative results are based on the intensity of the bands in the blots. So they're not just illustrations or pictures. These are the data. So let's look at another paper attracted by Sage next, and the title of this one is MIC is a prognostic biomarker and potential therapeutic target in osteosarcoma. And it's a similar title to the last one. I think that in itself can be a little bit of a red flag. If you're looking at someone's research output and it seems formulaic and predictable, it could be a warning that the authors are always finding what they set out to find. Uh, so what did I spot here? Well, we're looking at figure two, and these are tissue samples of osteosarcoma from patients. And on the top row, we can see brown staining of MYC. This is a protein associated with different types of cancers, and what the authors want to check here is are osteosarcomas with high expression of MYC, that's the darker tumors, more aggressive. But it's not just enough to only stain for MYC. We might be concerned that inconsistent histology technique or differences in, in cell density might be causing the greater brown staining. So the bottom row shows H&E staining for the same tumors. And this is a routine histology stain, this purple one, and it serves as a reference and a demonstration of the consistency of the technique. But the authors have basically cheated here because four of these images in the bottom row just show overlapping areas of the same tumor. I'll show an animation here. This is really troubling. Either the authors didn't care to label their images properly and got in a big muddle, or perhaps the histology slides weren't very consistent, so they've decided to show just the same tumor sample over and over again and hope no one's noticed. Actually, this last one is mirrored, and to me that lends more weight to the deception theory, because it's hard to see why anyone would invert a photo of an histology slide. Shortly after I left a comment about this, Junfeng Duan replied and just replaced three of the images. Personally, I don't find that particularly credible. And after that, there was a botched retraction notice from Sage. It seems they copied the wrong text. In the meantime, I also added another Western block question. Again, this was carefully chosen, and subsequently Sage updated their retraction notice, which I'll quote from again. The following article has been retracted at the request of the editor and the publisher. The authors contacted Sage Publishing to replace figure two in this publication. The journal editor noted a pub peer post that highlighted duplicated features within individual panels of figure 2A. An internal investigation of the remaining figures raised concern in the following figure panels, figure 1A, figure 1B, figure 5C, figure 6C. The authors explained that the errors in figure 2 were inadvertent and provided underlying images for all the figures cited above. An internal examination of these images raised further concerns about the integrity of the figure panels. Due to unresolved concerns about the image integrity that call into question the validity of the findings, the Therapeutic Advance in Medical Oncology editor retracts the article. The authors disagreed with the retraction. Once again, I think it's important to note that the images are the raw data. In this case, the histology slides are given a score for their staining intensity by a scientist, and then these scores are averaged and analyzed statistically, including, for example, these survival curves. So if the authors don't have clear control over the labeling, the arrangement, and the uniqueness of their images, the results just can't be relied upon. And the final retraction we've had so far is in bioscience reports. And the title for this one, SMARC B1, is a novel diagnostic and prognostic biomarker for osteosarcoma. Again, it's quite a formulaic title, and the problem I spotted here was similar again. I'll just annotate this image below. We have overlaps in the HE staining and in the SMARC B1 slides above. As before, each column should represent a unique tumor sample from an individual patient. And once again, this discovery process happened in two informative steps. 
The authors agreed with an initial comment of mine, tried to correct the figure, but missed additional problems even after supposedly checking the raw data. And the authors tried to correct the article, but the editorial board of this journal also decided to retract instead. Here's their retraction notice. This article is being retracted from Bioscience Reports at the request of the editor-in-chief and the editorial board following receipt of a notification from a reader alerting the editorial board to duplications in Figure 1A. The authors have contacted the journal to correct the article, however, given the extent of the issues raised, the editorial board stand by the decision to retract the article. The authors do not agree to the retraction. So those are the three retractions so far. We've also had two corrections. The authors were permitted by Wiley to simply replace one of the images in figure one in their paper. Top K is a novel prognostic and therapeutic target in Cordoma. The correction didn't acknowledge that this image was later published elsewhere in a Wiley journal and labelled as showing a different cancer type, and that later paper has not been corrected. I also asked for the raw data from some cell growth experiments in this corrected paper. Personally, I think this level of similarity in the growth characteristics between two cell lines seems like a pretty impressive coincidence. The authors responded on PubPeer. Unfortunately, the raw data was gone due to a hard drive problem without backup during the COVID-19 era. I find this excuse is just a little bit too convenient, especially as the hard drive with the images seems to be working just fine. The authors keep turning up new histology slides whenever they get caught out recycling them. Our last correction is in the American Journal for Cancer Research. The authors were permitted to replace these overlapping areas in some images of cell growth inhibition experiments and these overlaps in histology slides. To be honest, I was a little bit disappointed here. I emailed with someone at this journal and they said that the paper would be retracted and that they would no longer accept submissions from Hornacek's team. So it's not really clear to me why a correction has materialized instead, but I'm not going to put this journal on blast here because most journals have done nothing. How about these two overlaps in the Journal of Orthopedic Surgery? No response. Well, actually, to be fair, the co-editor-in-chief of this journal is um, Francis Hornacek, so maybe I shouldn't be surprised. How about these overlapping images of cells published in Cellular Physiology and Biochemistry, and also published elsewhere, apparently showing a different experiment? No action taken. What about this case report in the Journal of Orthopedic Research? These images are supposed to show primary and recurrent tumours. The authors describe them as indistinguishable, which is true because it's the same bloody biopsy. The authors responded to this on Papier and accepted my point almost a year ago, but the paper has never been corrected. In total, I left comments about likely errors on 25 of Hornacek's papers, which, to be fair, is not the majority of his research. But as usual, we have to keep in mind that what is in the paper is actually a very narrow window into the research process. If the authors were just a little bit smarter and cut separate non-overlapping images out of a larger image or just move the microscope further along, I'd never have been able to find these errors in the first place. So really, we don't know how many mistakes there are, and the authors give lame excuses when they're asked for the raw data. At the very end of last year, that's December 2022, I emailed the University of Miami. I had several communications with their research integrity contacts by email, and I have to say the conclusion is pretty disappointing. After 10 months of vague and uninformative updates, I received this email. This matter is still under investigation, but not by the University of Miami. After discussions with our federal government Office of Research Integrity and pursuant to federal regulations, it was determined that the University of Miami is not the appropriate institution to conduct the investigation of these allegations because all of the research for the articles was conducted prior to Dr. Hornacek and Dr. Duan's arrival at the University of Miami. The University of Miami never held any of the grants supporting the research and the University of Miami never held and does not currently hold any of the original data supporting the research. Therefore, the responsibility for the investigation falls on the institutions that held the grants and the data. That's UCLA and Massachusetts General Hospital. As mentioned, the Office for Research Integrity has documented this case and will see it through to a final conclusion. The University of Miami is no longer directly involved in this case and will not be notified of any further actions. It's interesting to me that this is simply a case of grant money and administrative processes to the University of Miami. Do they even care that they've recruited someone to chair their orthopedics department on the back of a string of faked research which is now being retracted? Do they expect the highest ethical standards from the surgeons that they employ? I mean, it seems quite possible to me that Francis Hornacek is a good, if not a great, surgeon. But it's also possible that this apparent lapse in his research integrity awareness and capability may not be entirely confined to his laboratory research program. 
Is Hornacek going to carry on merrily judging other people's careers, editing journals, reviewing papers, teaching students about research at the University of Miami, all the while under investigation for this string of silliness? Well, apparently so. It just seems very broken to me. Something I'd like to add is that I tried to get the University of Miami student newspaper to write about this case. It seems like something so perfectly relevant for a student newspaper. And student reporting has been very powerful at Stanford, but I've had no luck. There just doesn't seem to be any interest. I suppose they have a lot of college football to cover. So now it's time to put Francis Hornacek and Junfeng Duan in science prison. I'm actually going to expand the JPEG out a little bit here, make some more space. There's now a Patreon for this channel if you'd like to support this work. It's unbelievably time consuming. And another really important way to support this channel is to share and like the video. It's not going to be friendly to the YouTube algorithm. So sending this to people who are likely to be interested is probably the best way to go. Finally, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. Um, some credit here in the story should go to Image Twin and to other people who contributed comments on Hornacek's papers. Uh, there were, in fact, at least a couple of comments that preceded my own, although the vast majority have been left by me. 